what's going on here with Nate28 and this is Cross Beats Production. So I just wanted to show you guys this limiter that I've got here and just explain a few things to you so you guys understand what it is, what it does and um, you know just uh, as show and tell basically. So pretty much I've come across this because I was watching a few things with the mastering engineer um, and they were talking about different limiters they use and they spoke about this one as one of the better ones that they prefer to use within a digital sense um, rather than just analog limiters. Uh, there's there's obviously other limiters out there. This isn't a be all and end all. I'm not talking about that. I'm just referring about this specific limiter so you guys understand what it is, and uh, maybe you can try it out for yourself if you don't already know about it. So basically, it works in a unique fashion, from what I can tell. Um, to other limiters, it kind of works in the sense of a two stage limiting process. So it has kind of what you would think of as like compression before brick wall. And the limiter 1 and 2 are basically inside of the, the actual plug-in. You can't see it per se what's going on, but you can see the level that's going into it and how much of the transient is still coming out uh, in effect. And then the next stage is the brick wall stage where it pretty much um, creates a ceiling and the, the level cannot go past that. So um, the, the way it works, though, is pretty much you input the gain into it as you would normally with any limiter, and then the output dial on this side here on the right um, creates the ceiling. So you can set a function here. It's got a, like a little auto button here, which kind of controls the volume uh, automatically. So when you're inputting the gain, you're not just um, making an increase in volume and then making it think like you're actually doing something good when you don't know what's happening. So basically helps you, you know, level match before you release it. And then you can hear, you know, the difference between before and after. So the next stage here is transient. So this is just the way that the transient goes through that first stage of limiting. So pretty much it's like a react. Uh, it's got this react button here. And that first section, so A, basically allows nothing to go through with the transient. So like um, hard limiting, I, sh I should say hard clipping, not hard limiting. Uh, the next thing is uh, prediction, so or predict. And it's just A and B and C. It's basically just two different versions of it and just allows it to... Uh, have different sounds to both of those versions. The next thing here then is with the predict version, it has an attack setting. So you can change the attack of the way that the first limiter allows transients through. So if you want it to be a faster attack, um, it'll let it allow less transients through. The slower you go, uh, the more transients come through. And then the next stage of limiting will have to deal with those at that point. The next thing is release, obviously like a compressor, you would see a release on a compressor. I guess you can set this to whatever you want as a release, um, whatever sounds good. But I use, usually technically I use um, the BPM of the track to set releases on compressors and limiters alike. So, you know, once you've got the input, you put that into, I'll play an audio source in a second, but I just want to explain this to you. So you get to the next section next section here, which is word length, basically dithering. That's pretty much what it is. And um, actually, I missed the section here, which has got um, the H order and oversample. So basically, H order is just the way that the audio uh, is being transformed through this limiter, and the oversample is oversampling the actual source. Um, then, obviously, dithering, we've already covered that. So the next part here is also the level section. So it's how that the, le the limiter deals with the level of audio. Um, kind of predicting the way that the audio is going through it in a sense. Uh, the more of this that you use, the I guess you you might hear more distortion, but because it's such a clean limiter, um, it's quite easy to hear distortion on it as well. So, um, you know, you can hear it when it's actually negatively affecting the transients. So the next thing here is just link, unlink. So that would be the stereo link. So obviously you know what that is. I don't need to really explain that. Um, the audio function here, which I said about that earlier, so auto controls that, so you can put that on and off. So you'd obviously have that off once you've completed the, the limiting phase, and then you just set the ceiling here. So basically, this is a ceiling where you'd finalize the, the actual level, and that would be it. Um, the metering section here, it's got K, K14 and I think K20, yeah, K20, K20 and K14, um, and it's got left, right, um, which is basically calibrate, so that sends it through a pink noise. So you can hear that and, and calibrate your monitors if you need to. Um, so that is pretty much it. So let's get into the way it sounds. Um, from what I've listened to so far, it sounds pretty clear, pretty um, non-coloring and decent, but it is expensive. So have that in mind when you check this out. I'll leave the link in the description down below. 
but let's get straight into the audio source and I'll play this beat that I'm just working on right now so you guys can hear it. So without further ado, let's straight into it. So comparing it to other limiters, um, how does it compare? So I would say that it's quite a clean limiter. Um, it does have quite a, I guess, a, a clear sound to it. Um, you can obviously distort like you can do with any other limiter or brick wall limiter, but um, if you're careful with it and you, 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 know, you set it up correctly, then you don't get too much distortion. Um, comparing it to, for example, a Waves L2, um, that a Waves L2 is fantastic, it's a great limiter, uh, but I can definitely hear colorization with that limiter versus this one. Um, even with the Ozone 7, for example, the maximizer on that, you can hear distortion or, or colorization with those limiters. Um, it's not to say that that's bad, it might be exactly what you're after with your mix, um, or you may want a clinical type of limiter like this one. I'd say if you're looking at limiters, um, compare them to any one that you have. You know, it's it's not it's not a win or lose game with this thing. It's it, obviously you've got the money to spend. If you do, um, then you could obviously ch check it out and go from there. If you don't, um, I would say it's probably not you know going to be anything you'd lose out on if you don't spend the money. That's just my opinion. I think you can probably get away with any other limiter. Even the for example Fab Filter, they make a fantastic limiter. Their one is pretty much you know bar none to any other limiter I've used. So. Yeah, anyway, that's just my two cents on this. So if you guys um, like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and also make your comments down below. Um, I really appreciate all the love on this channel, and I'm, just, I'm surprised about how good it's actually gone. So yeah, without further ado, catch you guys in the next one, and peace.